Now, Wakab, even though they have those zebra striped legs, actually have nothing to do with the zebra at all. They're actually the only known relative of the giraffe. It's kind of like a short giraffe with different clothes on. Giraffes live out on the savannah. They want to be nice and tall and eat off the tall trees, but she lives here in the forest and she's very, very shy. So she prefers to be a little more compact, a little more easily able to disappear. That extra bit of camouflage she has does a great job of helping her blend in here in the forest. Now, one of the best ways to spot animals here in the forest is to be on the lookout for movement. A lot of times the animals will rely on their camouflage to conceal themselves, sometimes not even hiding behind anything, just hoping to blend into the background. And then as soon as they move, you realize, oh, there's an animal right here in front of my face. So be on the lookout. If you look all the way back there in the back, between the two rock walls, you can just barely make out, it looks like there might be a rhino back there. Okay, I can't see anything. It's kind of tough to spot, you can just barely see it. If it were moving, you would know what I'm talking about. Also coming up here on the left hand side, you're going to see some reddish coppery colored animals, and these are called fongos, and the lighter tan one is called a greater kudu. Now, black rhinos are actually really tough to spot these days. There's only about 5,000 black rhinos left in the entire world. And that is due, of course, to poaching for their horns. Their horns are believed to have medicinal value in certain cultures around the world, but are actually just the exact same substance as our hair and fingernails. <laughs> now, it might sound crazy to you guys if people go through all the effort to poach animals for fingernails, but that's where going home, learning more about these animals and sharing that with others can actually help make a real difference and a real impact on our lives out here in Africa. By working together, we can help combat that old superstition and hopefully eliminate the market for rhino horns altogether. Over here to the left-hand side, up on top of these logs, you're going to see a pod of pink back pelicans, which get the name from the patch of pink they get on their back during mating season. That's how they let each other know that they are single and are ready to mingle. Over here to the left hand side, you'll see a whole bunch of Nile crocodile. Now these Nile crocodile get as much as 16 to 20 feet long, which is about as long as a giraffe is tall. They've actually been known to jump almost their entire body length out of the water, but we're not going to stick around here and let them prove it. I do recommend going home and looking up a video of those guys jumping up out of the water. They'll go from the tip of their nose to the tip of their tail, using that powerful tail to whip themselves out of the water like a really ugly mermaid. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and make our way out to the savanna. The savanna is a completely different ecosystem with different animals, but you'll probably recognize this area of the reserve. It tends to be the one that comes to mind when people think of Africa. It's got the wide open grasslands, the tall acacia trees, and it's also home to a lot of the more celebrity animals, things like your elephants and lions and giraffes. So be on the lookout for your favorites out here, folks. <laughs> Now coming up here on the right hand side, you're going to see a big tree, and this is called a baobab tree. You'll probably recognize it by its nickname, the Tree of Life, which it gets because it stores thousands of gallons of water within its trunk. Elephants have actually figured out that water is in there, and they'll come along and use their tusks to poke holes in the trunk, and then drink the water out, kind of like their own little elephant water tower. Some of the other animals also chew on the roots of the bark to get water out that way. Now, like I said, this area is called a savanna. That's the type of ecosystem, just like we came from the forest. Now we're heading into the savanna. This area, specifically and geographically, is referred to as the Serengeti grasslands. They stretch for hundreds of miles across the continent of Africa, and they're used as a migratory superhighway for tons of different species every year. So be on the lookout for lots of really cool, really diverse wildlife out here, folks. Chances are you'll get to see some pretty cool stuff.
Coming up here on the right hand side, it does look like there's a couple giraffes hanging out. Now there's a few different varieties of giraffe in the world. The one that people are typically most familiar with are the reticulated giraffe. They've got a very pristine net-like pattern. If you're thinking of a giraffe, that's probably what you're thinking of. But if you look at these guys, you'll notice they've got more irregularly shaped spots, kind of leafy around the edges. That's you can tell that these are actually Maasai giraffe. It's a little bit different type. Over here to the right hand side, you also see a couple of cream colored antelope out there in the distance, and those are called Eland. And then closest to us, these huge horns you see sticking up belong to some Ancoli cattle, which are the only domesticated animals here on the reserve. But they're not used for meat or milk like most domesticated species. They're actually considered to be a symbol of wealth. And the farmers who raise them take a ton of pride in those guys. Despite being used as a symbol of wealth, their horns are not just for show either. They actually do serve a very real purpose. They're filled with a bunch of blood vessels. And their blood will pump up into those horns where it can cool off and then circulate back down in their bodies. And that's how they're able to stay nice and cool out here on the reserve. Take a look over here to the left hand side in this little cubby hole. There is actually a uh, hyena hanging out. Do y'all see that, guys? Now, contrary to popular belief, hyenas are not scavengers. They do their own hunting, just like any other predator. They are, however, very opportunistic. So you often find them stealing from a leopard or a cheetah. Those animals are very timid, not really willing to put up a fight with one of those hyenas. So running over and snatching their prey from them makes a pretty quick and easy meal. Now the tall mounds you see all around us are actually termite mounds and they'll get to be as hard as concrete. Y'all are probably wondering what they're made out of and it's not the first thing you'll think of, but it's definitely number two. Termites have really only got one opening. It's used both as an entrance and an exit. So you often hear those referred to as a mixture of saliva and dung and that's because they come from the same place. Here's those eland here to our right. Eland are the largest antelopes in Africa. These are both ladies, so you don't quite get an idea of their full size. But a big male can stand as much as six feet tall just at his shoulders. Over here to the left hand side, there is a baby giraffe hanging out. Baby giraffes could be as tall as six feet when they're born. They get a pretty good little head start on being the tallest land animal in the world. But all of a sudden, they'll the top out somewhere around 16 to 20 feet tall. The first thing those little guys will discover is gravity, and that's because their mamas get birth standing up. So they've got quite a little tumble to welcome them into the world. <laughs> now up ahead, you're gonna see a bunch of gray animals, and those are white bearded wildebeest. Wildebeest are one of those animals famous for migrating through these Serengeti grasslands every year. If you've ever seen a nature documentary about Africa, you've probably seen at least one segment on their massive herds. They can travel in groups of well over a million. Herds of that magnitude truly have the power to shape entire landscapes with their millions of folks pounding the dirt every single day. Just one of the many ways the animals out here work to shape their landscape just as much as it works to shape them. some cinnamon colored antelope up there as well and those are called springbok. Springbok get their name because when they feel threatened or excited they'll spring into the air as much as six feet and bounce around the savannah like crazy. Very cute little behavior known as pronking. Yeah. 
much better look at some Springbok coming up here on the right hand side. I do see uh, another baby giraffe up ahead. We'll hopefully get a pretty good look at it in just a second. Look at that little teeny look, tiny look baby guy. He said, he said, tell her to feed mommy the chocolate. It's actually a giraffe on the road up ahead. Yeah, I'm going to hang tight for a second. Up ahead, you'll see some fallen trees. That's a pretty good sign that there might be some elephants in the area. A lot of times, to save the effort of reaching up to the top of the tall trees, elephants will just go and knock the whole thing down and go to town. They've got quite the appetite, so finishing off a whole tree's worth of vegetation is not entirely out of the question. Of what. Take a look over there at the right hand side, guys. It does look like there is an elephant over there, a relatively young elephant. I say relatively because elephants have a pretty long childhood. It can take them as much as 15 years to reach adulthood. And just like us, they have to learn pretty much everything from the time they're born, including how to use their trunks. Their trunks have got over 40,000 muscles in them, which is more than we have in our entire bodies. So as you might imagine, that takes a little getting used to. But they'll learn by watching their mamas and their big siblings and the rest of the ladies in the herd. They'll teach them all kinds of little tips and tricks about what it takes to be a successful elephant. Now I'm going to head around the corner now to the red clay pits. Recently there's been a whole herd of elephants who have taken quite a liking to this area of the 